Hi there! I'm going to show you how to make a, a fancier than normal envelope. This is just a basic A2 um, envelope, um, but it has this pretty decorative edge and it's lined with pretty patterned paper. And so um, it's pretty easy to make an A2 envelope and I'm going to be using my Martha Stewart scoreboard and a piece of paper and a piece of patterned paper. So um, I'll just show you how I did it. So the Martha Stewart scoreboard has this um, angle, angled thing for making envelopes and for making uh, scores on the diagonal. Now uh, you'll notice that my, my board has lines on it. I put these lines on it when I first got it because what they do is they help you when you're um, when you don't use this um, when you're scoring on an angle so what I was finding was that um, I was actually making these this is the first thing I made with my scoreboard um, and also the first thing I made with my Cricut cartridge uh, was a, I think I made 20 or 30 of these little bags from the um, What's the card called? A Forever Young cart cartridge. So what I was finding was that for these angled lines right here, when I went to score them, sometimes I thought I was lining it up, but it turns out I had the top lined up with one line with one channel, and I had the bottom lined up with another channel. So I would end up either hopping a channel or making a really crooked line. So I just drew this line down here and that really helped me because then I could know for sure that I was lining it up right. And then for various other projects that I've done I've made these lines just to help me when I was making repetitive um, scores. And then the other thing that I've done is I've put the letter C right here at the 4.25. That just reminds me that this is where I score for a basic A2 card. So here's an example of a card and even though this one was made with one of those die cuts with a view um, card blank so it was already scored but if I were scoring I would um, just kind of line it up like that and know that that's where I have to score without having to remember the measurement of 4.25 information here on how to make envelopes only what I found was it says here if you look at your if you're using the Martha Stewart one and if you look at it let me see if I can move it to show you see how it says right here it says A2 to make an A2 envelope you start with your paper eight and a half by eight and a half and you score it at three inches and three and five eighths of an inch what I did when I followed those directions is I wound up with a card uh, with an envelope here that is actually quite a bit too big for a standard A2 card. I mean not quite a bit but it's it's big enough that it really floats around a lot in there um, so I've decided to to um, change it so instead of starting with eight and a half by eight and a half, I'm actually starting with a piece of eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter paper. And I find that this makes a better sized paper. So I'm just gonna follow, otherwise follow the directions right here. So it says A2, start with eight and a half by eight and a half. I'm starting with eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter, but I'm gonna otherwise follow the directions. So it says here to score at three inches. So three inches right here. You'll notice I have a little star there because I make these envelopes quite a lot. So there we go. And then you turn it 90 degrees and line it up on the diagonal again. And the second line that you, the second score that you make is three and five eighths. So that's up here. And I put a little star beside that too because that's really the only thing I ever use this uh, triangle thing for. So then you turn it another 90 degrees and score it at three. So you do three and then three and five eighths and then three and then turn another 90 degrees and do it at three and five eighths again. You just want to make sure that you're lining it up with the diagonal every time that you score. That way you're sure that you're, all of your lines are going to match up properly. So then I just go ahead and fold it at this point. And so you end up with, with a piece of paper like this. Now these little triangle pieces here, here, and here need to be cut out. And when you cut them, just make sure that you cut um, 
so that the fold is gone. So, so I'm cutting the entire scored area, including the little scored channel, cutting the whole thing out so that you don't see a trace of your scores at all. Um, if you don't cut enough away at this step, what ends up happening is um, it's fine on one side, but one side is going to um, be too bulky for the envelope to fold properly. So you just want to make sure that you cut every trace of the fold away. So you're, I guess that means you're cutting on the inside of the score mark or the outside, I guess, depending on how you're looking at it. What you end up with. So, um, I like to I like to round my corner of this folds like this, and then you see this. So I like to round that corner using just my simple corner rounder. And there are two different types of. Well, this one comes in two different sizes, anyways. Um, this one is more of a. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's kind of like a, it makes a bigger corner and this one makes a smaller corner. So I like to round this one with the bigger one. So there we go. So that goes like that. Now, um, I didn't round this corner because I'm going to use my edge punch for that. So I'm using my Martha Stewart around the corner or around the page, I forget what it's called, um, punch sets. This is the only punch set that I have, but you could use any um, around the corner page punches. Or um, even if you have an edge punch that you know how to go around the corner on, there's a way, there are different YouTube videos that show you how to do that. Um, I don't want to fuss with it, so I'm just choosing to use the one that I have an around the corner punch for. So, what you do is you just line it up so that it's lined up with this edge and with this edge. And then I like to just kind of turn it over so that I know that it's, um, so that it's, I know that it's punching right where I want it to punch. Okay, so that's what you start with. So you always start with the corner when you're using these punches. And then um, I'm just going to. Um, zoom this in a little bit if I can. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, yeah, I think you could, it's a little shiny, but I think you can see that. So when you're punching the edge for the first time, what you want to do is you want to make sure that this edge here that's poking out is lined up with this little edge there. So that lines up with the first corner punch that you've done. And then you also want to make sure that this side is flush when you're punching. And so um, then what I like to do is I pull it out a little bit too far. I pull it out until I can see it right there. Um, I'm not sure if you can see because of the shadow, but that's where the punching actually ends. So I bring that in and then I just bring it into the next place where that... So at this point, because I'm, I'm not going from a corner, I'm lining up with this design over here, not this one over here. So I want to line it up with this design over here and then I just want to make sure that this side is flush and do another punch. And then that's all. And then we're just going to cut those off when we're done. So that's that side. Now I'm going to do this side. So I'm lining it up with this because it's on the corner. Lining it up there and then I'm just going to make sure that it's flush on this side and do my punch. And then I'm just pulling it through a little too much and then I'm going back one design and I'm going to hold it when I line it up there and then I'm just going to make sure that it's flush over on the other side and punch. So Now again, that doesn't look very nice so I'm just going to trim it off but before I do that I'm going to go back out. Otherwise I'll be doing half of this off camera. So I'm just going to oops, snip there. Oh, I didn't quite snip enough of that. I'm going to try it again. Snip that. And I'm also going to snip 
rage. If I can, I'm not used to doing this with my hands in the air. There. And I'm just going to do the same thing on this side. Snip right there, and then just snip that little piece off that is hanging there. Okay. So, there we go. Get rid of all my little scraps. And there we go. So, so far, this is what we have. Like that. So now, um, you could just go ahead and tape down, glue down your sides, and that's fine. Um, but I wanted to have a decorative lining in this just to make it a little bit more fancy. Um, and so for that, I want to start by rounding the corner so that it matches this one. And so I'm going to choose my smaller corner rounder for that. So just like that. That way it's the same. If I use my bigger one, this would have been, it wouldn't have matched up with that. So now what you want to do is you want to score this so that you're not scoring on this corner. You don't want to score this way, you want to score this way. So um, I'll use this as an as a opportunity to show you how. If I didn't, this is really easy to do because I have this and I can just line it up there. But if this was still in there, sometimes I don't want to bother with um, taking it out. Sometimes I even forget I have it, to be honest. So what I do is I just line up this corner with this and I just make sure that the line lines up with both of the corners. And then I can score. And I don't have to worry that I was over here when I should have been over here if that makes sense. So, I like to fold it before I glue it because I find otherwise it, when I um, when I glue it down, if it hasn't already been folded, it uh, doesn't fold properly. So, I just use my regular tape runner for this because it doesn't have to really be all that strong. Okay, and here I'm just sort of, I'm just centering it and putting it so that the um, score lines are on top of one another and so that it's as centered as I want it to be. So, again, there, there we go. Okay, so there we go. Now, that's my envelope. I'm ready to tape it down. Now, I like to use the Terrifically Tacky or Redline Tape uh, for all of my envelopes because it's really, really strong. And envelopes are usually, even if this one isn't going through the mail, which is why I've used such lightweight um, cardstock, but uh, even if it's not going through the mail, envelopes do tend to um, take a lot of wear and tear, so I don't want it falling apart before the person has had a chance to open their card. So I just put that there, and then I cut all my nails off last night, so I'm having a bit of trouble with this tape, more trouble than usual, but there we go. Okay. Now when I put this down, I don't want to make it be completely flat because I want there to be a bit of give in this envelope because the card that I'm putting in it actually has a little bit of dimension. So you see it has pop dots. So I uh, want there to be enough room for me to slide my card in and there's also a googly eye on there. So and there. So there you go. So that's how you make a bit more decorative A2 envelope which fits a card like this, an A2 card.